With all the talks about semiconductors in recent years, with the chip shortage and how chips are becoming the new oil in the ever-growing digital modern age, all eyes are on the likes of Tesla, Apple, and Nvidia. However, although they are key companies in providing us our technology, they all depend on battery makers who are all dependent on raw material providers and essentially mining. The largest mining company in particular is BHP Group. A worldwide mining, metals, and oil business with its headquarters in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, is known as BHP Group. In the mining community of Silverton, New South Wales, on July 16, 1885, the Broken Hill Proprietary Company was established. Based on the market capitalization, BHP was the largest mining corporation in the world by 2017 and the third largest revenue generating company in Melbourne. Of course, there are other large miners in Australia that we cannot forget to mention, specifically Rio Tinto and FMG. But BHP stands above all of them. In addition to owning and operating copper mines in Olympic Dam, North Adelaide, and a coal mine in Bowen Basin, Central Queensland, BHP mines the majority of its iron ore in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. When we look at dollars generated, for BHP they generated over $65 billion in revenue with iron ore accounting for nearly 48% of their revenue at $30 billion. Rio Tinto and FMG both fall short at $55 billion and $18 billion respectively. Now I know what you're thinking, what does iron ore have to do with lithium mining? Well it doesn't. What's key to take away here is that although BHP Group has the key stronghold in Australia in terms of mining, their CEO made it clear that they have no intention to mine lithium, arguably the most valuable mineral heavily in a country where they dominate in. Australia accounts for the largest source of lithium materials, accounting for 53% of the world's supply, with the other countries sharing the resource being Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. They don't come anywhere near to the amount of deposits held in Australia specifically in the Pilbara region, which is operated and mostly mined by the company we are really interested in today, Pilbara Minerals. Pilbara Minerals is the owner of the largest independent hard rock lithium operation in the entire world. The main initiative they have been working on in recent years was their Pilgangora project. One of the largest hard rock lithium resources in the world, the Pilkangora ore body, is regarded as strategically significant within the global lithium supply chain. The Pilgan plant, also known as the original Pilgangora plant, is situated on the northern edge of the Pilgangora region and produces tantalite and spodamine concentrates. The Nagaju plant is situated to the south and only produces spodamine concentrates. Having two processing facilities gives Pilbara Minerals flexibility and speed to market because it allows us to quickly boost production to meet rising lithium market demand. We can also blend products to meet clients' needs thanks to our ability to do so. Although this project has been the key infrastructure to get them to where they are today, in terms of producing the world's lithium, they understand that the need for long-term expansion that they need to invest even further to meet the ever-increasing demand of EVs and batteries as a whole. Recently, Pilbara has shared that they will spend $350 million expanding its processing plant in Western Australia to produce 1 million tons of spodamine concentrate a year, up to 580,000 tons now. That would be enough to produce about 15 million EVs a year, according to Bloomberg calculations. But is it enough to make the largest electric car automaker such as Tesla satisfied with their output? Just last year, Musk stated, price of lithium has gone to insane levels. There is no shortage of the element itself as lithium is almost everywhere on Earth, but the pace of extraction slash refinement is slow. Most lithium mining happens in Australia, from hard rock sources and in Chile from brines. But lithium refining is dominated by China, which currently accounts for more than 75% of global lithium processing capacity. I'd like to once again urge entrepreneurs to enter the lithium refining business. The mining is relatively easy, the refining is much harder. Adding that there are software-like margins to be made in the lithium processing business, you can't lose, it's a license to print money. How much lithium is actually included in Tesla batteries? 
It's a reasonable thing to ask for individuals with an interest in the EV industry. The answer is that lithium can become a challenge for any EV manufacturer if there is not enough of the correct grade. Even though it may not be a significant amount compared to other raw materials, in 2016 Musk claimed that lithium was only needed in small amounts compared to nickel or graphite, calling it the salt in your salad, and accounting for roughly 2% of the mass of a cell. The volume, however, is an important consideration, since without a consistent supply of raw materials, Tesla risks running into a bottleneck in order to reach its lofty ambitions. Of course, this applies to every automaker making EVs now and establishing goals for the upcoming decades, not just Tesla. Lithium consumption is anticipated to increase significantly in the upcoming years as a result. Benchmark Mineral Intelligence predicts that by 2030, the global demand for lithium would amount to 2.4 million metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalent, which is a significant increase from the 900,000 MT predicted for 2023. So what does this mean for Pilbara moving forward? And are they reliable enough to meet the world's demand for arguably one of the most valuable materials in history? Well, two things here first, M and A. Consolidation in the space has already attempted to take place this year, as top lithium miner Albemarle offered to purchase Australia's Liontown resources, but was rejected. In another Australian miner, Essential Metals also declined a bid coming from a joint venture offer coming from Tianqi Lithium and IGO. However, lithium expert Joe Lowry of Global Lithium said, I think you might see some of the better small exploration plays in Western Australia just get absorbed sooner than they would have otherwise. Because it's a grab for the rock now, he said. Why wait until they have a market cap of $500 million if you can pick them off when they've got a market cap of $50 million? With Pilbara Minerals having a current market cap of just short of $10 billion, it's clear that they are no small players and should be offering to buy up some of these smaller miners. But that leads to the second issue, which is refining. A lot of the other top lithium miners in the countries not only mine their lithium, but also handle a large part of the refining process as well, which prepares it to be used to make batteries. Pilbara sells a lot of mined lithium to multiple companies in China which do the mining themselves, leaving opportunity dollars on the table. Pilbara stated that they are working with an Australian tech company, Calix, to upstart a refinement process locally at home, arguably the most important step to ready the material for batteries. Refining the lithium at home would also allow Pilbara to tap into Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, as Australia is one of the many countries that have free trade agreements with the United States. The Australian government has even put hundreds of millions of dollars towards uplifting a local refinery industry, but still has several strides to go until it comes close to the output being done by their biggest consumer. Owning as many lithium mines as they do makes them a $10 billion company, but not having refineries creates a good problem to have. Whether it is a problem they will solve or an opportunity they will capitalize on, only time will tell. Until then, Keep one eye on Pilbara materials, as at no doubt the actions they take moving forward will be instrumental to the lithium industry as a whole.